Converting from vertex to standard is easier because you don't have to complete the square. Start off with vertex form. Now expand the square. Now distribute the leading coefficient. This is virtually already in standard form, you just have to identify the coefficients. Converting from standard to vertex form is a little trickier. Start with standard form. Divide the first two terms by the leading coefficient. Completing the square requires finding a way to see this as an altered version of a perfect square, which would look like this. In this particular case, 2y equals b over a, so y equals b over 2a. So really, the square we're trying to complete is this one. Whatever you add to complete the square, you have to subtract again so everything stays the same. Now just distribute the a to that last term and leave it outside the parentheses. Now that you have a perfect square, let's factor it. What we have now is a parabola under transformation. The leading coefficient does the same thing it usually does in standard form, but there's now a rigid horizontal and vertical transformation. The parabola will be translated horizontally, a distance of negative b over 2a, and vertically a distance of negative b squared over 4a plus c. Putting the parabola into vertex form essentially just formalizes these translations of the vertex. Converting from factor to standard is easier because you're just expanding a factored expression. Start off with factored form. Expand. Now distribute the leading coefficient. Compared to standard form, it's a simple matter to identify b and c. Converting from standard to factored form is a little trickier because you need to use the quadratic formula. After all, the linear factors of a parabola have the same x-intercepts as the parabola. Start with standard form. The x-intercepts occur where the parabola equals zero. Solving for x gives you the quadratic formula. The two solutions of the quadratic formula are the two values m and n in factored form. The leading coefficient is the same. <laughs>